Well, I've had my lunch, so <laughs> ready to focus again on this last 20 questions of our review for the final exam. And we are in Chapter 5. And we're looking for strategies. So in a sense, this is a monomial times a monomial. So it's just going to be 8 times 7, which is 56. I guess we can put this right in there. Fifty-six, and then x to the third times x to the first. We just add our exponents, and that will be x to the fourth. And enter. And that's good. Now here, this is where it starts to get a little tricky already. Because really, what does this say? Well, this says 5x to the 6th times 5x to the 6th. So it's saying this base is multiplied twice. So we could do it this way. And this would be 25x to the 12th. But the shortcut here is remember there is a 1 as an exponent by the 5. So this will be 5 to the second power, which is 25. And then x 6 times 2, which is the 12. So this would be 25 x to the 12th. Now, here again, our bases are the same, so this is just going to be, as we move the 3 up to the numerator, a negative 3, so this becomes a positive 2 up as an exponent. So it's negative 3 to the second power. It's even, so our results are positive, and it just becomes a 9. Type in the right things. There we go. Now, since our base is in a parenthesis and it's to the zero power, anything to the zero power is just one. Now, the rule here is you raise one to the third and three to the third. That will give you the fraction. 1 to the third is 1, and 3 to the third is 27. Now, here they want us to find the degree of this polynomial and determine which of these. Well, there are two terms, so it's a binomial. And the degree is determined by the largest degree of any term. Well, the degree of a term is defined by the sum of its exponents on the variable. So when we have one variable, two. So the degree of this is two. They're giving us some easy ones here. And it's, we set a binomial here. Okay, here we're doing a little substitution. We're saying that this function in which x is a negative 7. So again, you want to write it down and then substitute. 4 times negative 7 in parentheses squared minus 1. 
So negative 7 squared is 49. So we have 4 times 49 minus 1. Put that in my calculator and I go 4 times 49 is 196, so minus 1, 195. Again, you want to show the work. Here we want to combine like terms. Now we can do simple ones horizontally, but we said a good way to do it and develop a practice is to do it vertically. Now when we're adding like terms, the variable part doesn't change. That's just going to be x squared here. And this becomes 30. 30 x squared. Now again, we want a strategy to get the right answer. So let me set it up. And again, I would put the longer one on top. Since it's addition, we don't change any of the signs or anything. Just take away the parentheses. This becomes a negative 11x squared. These just cancel out, and this gives me plus 2. And there's the work to show it. So, negative 11x squared plus 2. Negative 11x squared plus 2. Now, again, this is multiplication. We have fractions. So, again, a good technique would be, what would be your sign of the answer? Well, a negative times a positive, we're going to have a negative there. And then we're going to have a fraction. Nothing will cancel out, so it's 1 times 3 is 3 over 64. And then it's going to be y to the what power? Just add your exponents to the tenth. And that should be your answer. All right, here we're distributing. And again, you would write it out on your paper. I think I can just do it here. So a negative 2 times 5 is a negative 10 a to the, did you say fourth? That is correct. Now we have a negative times the negative, so that's going to give us a positive 4 a to the third. 4 a carat third. And then we have a negative 2 times 5, so that's a negative 10, a to the second. And I could check my answer, distribute again, check your signs. That looks good. Now, they're asking us to multiply vertically. So, again, you could FOIL, but multiplying vertically is also a very good way. Let's do it. So, 7x minus 13, and then 6x plus 1. 
Now, 1 times these is just that, 7x minus 13. So, 1 times 13, negative 13. 1 times this is that. Now, 6 times a negative, thir negative 13. I'll use my calculator for that. So, 6 times... 13 is a negative 78 X now 6 X times 7 X is 42 X squared again this is the work you're showing you're showing that you've done it vertically so this is negative 13 this is going to be a negative 71x, and this will be 42x squared. So, I'm going to have to write that down because I probably won't remember. So, 42x squared minus 71x minus 13. All right. Let's put it in there. So, 42x squared so 42x squared minus 71x minus 13 checks out check our answer and we're good now here is that special way of f foiling and you could do it this way just by writing it twice. 4x minus 5 times 4x minus 5. Or you could use that special way where you square this, which is what we're doing, gives us a 16x squared. Our outers are a negative 20, inners a negative 20. Multiplying these two together is negative 20. Now we're going to double it. Negative 40x and then negative 5 times negative 5, or square this term. Or you could set it up vertically. Remember, you want to get it right. So, squaring the first term is 16x squared. Uh, negative... 40x plus 25. This is a perfect square trinomial. Oop. What did I do wrong here? Squared the first term. Oh, see, I wasn't even reading it right. Ah, that's to the third power, folks. So, yes, we're not there at all. Ooh. So I'm being what is called presumptuous in that I thought that was just squared. I didn't look at it that carefully. It's cubed, so we'd have to write it three times. So this would be part of the answer, but now we still have to multiply it by another time here. So we're going to multiply that. So multiplying this trinomial by another binomial, I just carefully need to watch our signs here putting them in like term columns and then adding them up and now let's see how we did and when I put it in I had the right answer okay again you have to <laughs> read it carefully I have a tendency to think I already know what the answer is without sometimes reading it carefully okay so use only positive exponents. Assume that all bases do not equal zero. Okay, so what is my base here? My base is actually just the x. So then this goes into fraction form, where my 9 stays on top, and my x goes down below to a positive exponent. So the key here, just the x 
is what goes down and the sign of the exponent changes. And in this one, we want to maybe group and then reduce. So 2x to the second y is x to the ninth on top, x to the sixth on the bottom. So we subtract 6 from 9 and get x to the third here. Now you can actually write that out as long as you know how to do it. So you group these two together, x to the ninth, bring the 6 up, subtract it from the 9, and you get 3. We're almost finished here now. Write in scientific notation. Well, the rule is, wherever the decimal is, we have to move it to make a number between 1 and 10. So, we're going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this becomes 1.53 times 10, and we moved it over 6 places. So, I will write that down. 1.53 times 10 to the negative 6. I see I didn't put the negative up there since this is a small number. So again, double check it. It's a small number. It's going to be a negative exponent and it's the number of places you moved it over to make it a number between 1 and 10. So 1.53 Now they give us this nice little time symbol down here because it's not really an X. And then we put a 10. Care to a negative 6. Now this is a small number that we want to convert to standard notation. So the strategy would be to write it out 8.205. Now we have to move that decimal place over. How many places? Six places. Well, one is already there, so that means we have to add five zeros. One, two, three, Four, five, so that we can move our decimal place overall six places. So it's one, two, three, four, five. All right, I'll keep that in mind. And we always add a zero out here, point. Now I need one, two, three, four, five, and then eight, two, zero, five. And that should do it. Almost finished now. We want to write this number in scientific notation. So, I think you know the procedure. It's going to be 1.37, right? That is now a number in between 1 and 10. And we move the decimal. There's three, six, nine, ten places. And our exponent will be ten. Oh, let me read it right here. Use multiplication methods needed here. 1.37. Ah, actually, I moved it 11 places. Didn't count right here. All right. This goes to show you. You need to check it carefully. All right. Now, perform this division. We said this type of answer 
you start to work on it by dividing each of these four terms into individual terms and you write the 8 under each one. So I think I can do that, keeping that in mind here. So 8 divided in there is going to be 3x to the third. Now my sign here for this middle one is going to be a negative. Since it's the one we don't write, x to the second. And then this is going to be plus 6x. Oop. Plus 6x. And then minus 5. So again, the rule is put the 8 under each term and simplify. Be careful of your signs, and that should do it. Well, I didn't do something right here. Let's see what I did wrong. Ah, you may have caught me on my multiplication tables here. 8 times 7 is 56. 8 times uh, 6 is 48. Oh, hurts me here. I did that one well. Okay, so now it's correct, I believe. Let's check it, yep. And now we have our last one. Okay, I told everyone you would get one like this, so here it is. x minus 3 divided into 4x squared minus 7x plus 2. How many times does x go into this? Well, 4x times. So x times 4x is 4x squared. This is going to be a negative. In fact, this one looks very familiar here. A negative 12x. Now the rule is we change our signs after we put our line there. This becomes a negative and this becomes a plus. So we then end up with a 5 here. x plus 2. Now x goes into there how many times? 5 times. x times 5 is 5x. This is a negative 15. Change our signs. And this becomes a 17. So for this one, we have a remainder. We would put it in this way, plus 17 over x minus 3. And that should be our answer. And we've put it in there, and we get to check our answer. And we did well. Now, theoretically, there are similar questions for these. And if I click on this here, I'll see there were three that I got wrong. That theoretically, I should probably go back and look at them again. But to keep this a little bit short, this one's a little shorter than the others, only uh, 24 minutes, we'll wind up this review.